Okay. Well, thank you for the opportunity to and, let's sorry, know. introduce yourself, Chief. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> Chief David Pratt, Hoya Police Department. Um, thank you for the opportunity to come and speak about um, this money and this opportunity for the police department as well as the city. Um, we tried to focus in the police department on um, wh what we could do. Um, a lot of people I know were talking about infrastructure and buildings and, and such, and we, we really took the, the tack that you know, our, our real office space is out on the street where, where we interact with the public. So we wanted to focus on those projects which could be utilized to help our officers perform better on the street and provide more services for the city, specifically um, you know, violence reduction. Um, so we focused primarily on um, three things. We wanted um, the shot spotter uh, technology, which is a technology to um, indicate um, through sensors when uh, shots are fired in the city. We really are um, excited about this. If, if we could ever get this technology, um, what we have set up or um, proposed would cost approximately 198000 for two years. It would cover two square miles of the city, which for the most part is about just about the entire, definitely the entire downtown area and stretches really from the river to Springdale, from the river up to Community Field, and then some, you know, a little more. So um, we're, we're excited about that prospect. Um, what it does is it detects shots that are fired that might not necessarily otherwise be called in by the public, um, not because the public doesn't want to call the calls in, but sometimes people hear things in and are hesitant to call the police because they think it's fireworks or it's too far away somebody closer will call and and that has a, a two-fold effect that a the um people who don't call it in uh you know don't well they never see a response from the police and the people where the shots are actually happening don't see the police come. Um, the, the statistics we have are about 80% of shots fired calls are not actually called into the police. So this would bypass all that and get us the information sooner. This technology goes right to the cruisers, so the responding officers would have that information instantaneously when the shots go off. And another big part of that is it, it rebuilds trust with the with the community and with the Police department, if you are in one of these areas where there might be shots fired and you heard it and maybe you didn't call it in because you don't think the police are going to come. Um, and when we don't come because we weren't called, it, it starts to eat away at that trust we have with the community. So the shot spotter will bring us into the area. People will see us come to the area where they know that this just happened and obviously will increase our response time to where we need to go. Another part of, uh, unfortunately, is when shots fired are called in, um, it could be called in several blocks away from where the shots actually took place. And our only thing to go off of is where the call came in. So our cruisers are responding possibly two or three blocks away from where the actual shots were fired. And that takes time to bring, you know, to, to figure that out. Once you get there and realize there's nothing in that area, you start spreading out your search. This would um, really focus the officers in instantaneously to where the shots were fired and hopefully uh, quick enough where we might be able to apprehend some people mm -hmm. that are, you know, uh, causing the city harm. Um, that's the real goal of this. Um, so we're hopeful for that. I think it's beneficial not only to the police department but to the city. Um, I know there was some talk of small business helping small business. Well, nothing helps small business more than good public safety. So I think it, it, it helps everyone. It just doesn't help the police department. It helps our officers do a better job. It also helps the public. Um, our second, you know, uh, second proposal is for tasers. That's 100, 138,000 for 40 tasers, but that, that isn't just the tasers, it's the tasers plus the equipment that goes along with it in the training. So um, we currently have about 30 tasers, which causes our officers to have to um, share the tasers, more of a sharing system, and not everybody gets one because there's not enough. Um, the goal would be to have as many of those as we can. For those not familiar with tasers, tasers are a, uh, 
less than lethal option to use when someone is very combative or you know potentially that which gives our officers another tool rather than to have to resort to you know deadly force um, it's a proven uh, proven effective tool and and we certainly could use them um, so chief let me just add so right now not every officer on the street has tasers. That's 100% correct. Okay. Um, our, our final um, of our, our top three proposals, we had many proposals we looked at. Um, I wanted to focus primarily on these three. Um, our last proposal was, was for $1,000 for each employee of the department uh, that worked through the COVID. Um, I, I know that, you know, that might not seem popular, but I, I think it's important that the public knows that our officers during COVID did not uh, switch to Zoom, did not uh, stay at home and answer calls from there. They were here every day during the pandemic dealing with crime and dealing with things. And many of our officers um, contracted COVID while working. Um, and I know that some of this um, money was earmarked to uh, go to first responders and public safety. And I just feel it's important to uh, reward those people that, that worked through that pandemic. Um, it was unprecedented and nothing like it before. And I think it's in the big picture. It's just a thank you to those people that, that did the job and did it well. Um, the other, uh, I don't know how much time I have. I, I try not to focus too much on the stuff that we have related to our physical station because I believe that is a DPW area and I'm sure they'll talk about it. Um, we have some duct work, some carpet, swipe cards, things like that. Um, in the big picture, they're, they're important, but not as important to me as those first three. Okay. And um, there was some other parts of the proposal for street cameras, which we have some, we can always use more. Cameras are the uh, uh, really the future of law enforcement. They're everywhere. We use them to solve all types of crimes. So um, we can always use more. I, but I, I didn't put that in the top priority because I feel like we do have a pretty good coverage of the city in cameras. There's always spots we can add to. Um, so if that was um, something that fit better into the, we, we certainly wouldn't uh, not want them. Let's just put it that way. And there is some, a well, little money for servers. If we get more cameras, you need more servers, obviously, to, to handle that. Um, that's, that's, that's what I have. I told you I'd be quick. I, I you know, wanted to stay focused. So your first priority would be the shot spotter? Or the tasers? I would say the shot spotter. Okay. Only because we do have some tasers, yep. but we have no shot spotter. So uh, if, if you were, if you as the mayor were picking between the two, I would hope you would pick shot spotter. And then tasers as well. And I did, our total original proposal was, um, well, the, the three main, it comes up to 478,000 and the, all the rest of the projects were like 543. So I felt like I cut more than I asked for and I tried to be reasonable and I, and I realized that everybody wants something. Um, so like a, like, just like a kid on his Christmas list, I'm trying to pick the, the best toys that I can and, and that are gonna be most beneficial to the police department as well as the city. Okay. And on the uh, shot spotter for the first year, how much of that is installation? How much is that is, or the equipment? And then how much is the it's contract? One price covers installation and monitoring. Okay. It's 198 for two years, so and it's it's per square mile. So I believe it's 49,000 per square mile. We per year. like per year. We would like two square miles. Uh, I, just because I know I went out myself and sort of measured the best I could with a vehicle to see what two, two miles as opposed to one mile look like. If we did one mile, could we do that? Sure. But you'd be leaving a lot of area out yeah. that would be unfortunate. 
if we're going to have the technology here, we should cover the city. Okay. And it's a two-year commitment. There's not a commitment after that. The equipment's there, but the you equipment's get someone, there at, that someone point, that at that point, if we decided that either, A, it wasn't uh, economically feasible or it wasn't doing what they claim it does, yep. we didn't feel it was doing the right thing. We just tell them we're done. They come and take the equipment away, and it's, okay. it's over. Okay. So we have no... Um, and there's also uh, no, um, they handle all the, all the maintenance, everything. The only thing they ask from us is, is, is uh, assistance in finding the right locations to put up the, the monitors. Um, obviously, the faster we can um, put up the monitors, the faster we can get the system going. They claim they can do it, I believe it was like six to eight weeks. They, once we say go, they would mm -hmm. have it up and running. I'm sure there'll be some... You know, six to eight weeks, I'm sure it'll be up and running. And then there would be some, you know, like any new system, some kinks to work out, move, move a monitor here or there to yep. get a better coverage. Um, but the, um, they handle it all. So there's no, there's no drag for me on my people that have to go around and monitor this equipment. If there's an issue, they come and take care of it. Okay. All included in that price. Chief, are we um, <clears throat> purchasing the equipment or are we leasing the equipment? You said that if we decide not to renew a monitoring contract that they would come and get the equipment. Well, I, I'm a, I, that's a good question. <laughs> I, I, to be honest with you, I believe that I, I'd, have to, I'd really have to look into that. I don't want to okay. misspeak. I believe, I believe that they handle all the equipment, so I would imagine that if I we're going to pull out, they would want okay. their equipment. Back. Let's, um, let's work together and work with Kate on that because there's some um, differences with federal funding, whether we're doing a lease agreement versus purchasing equipment. If we purchase agreement with federal funds and it goes offline, sometimes we have to return it. Mm -hmm. So let's do a little more digging on it um, okay. Sure. in terms of what, what it is that they're actually providing. Right. Yeah. I can, I'll have that by, I could, by tomorrow. Yeah, I, I was under the impression that it's their equipment, but right. they're providing it, and that's the forty-nine thousand for square that they're providing it and providing the service. Correct. With their equipment. Right. Uh, but I could be wrong. I w yeah, I, I believe that's what it is, but I don't want to misspeak here. But I will double check. Okay. Anything else, Chief? No, that's it. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you very All much. Right.